Hey everyone, hope you are all doing well. And it has been a busy week for Nord users as we finally got a beta version of Oxygen OS 11. And while some of you installed it already, some were waiting for the full review. So here it is almost after 3 days of using this update on my device and there are many doubts that quite a few of you had. So I'll clear those as well. So without wasting even a second, let's get into it as we have a lot to catch up on. Okay, first of all, let me clear one major doubt. Open beta versus stable. So those of you who are on Android 10 or Oxygen OS 10.5.10 or any other version, well, you are on stable Oxygen OS and you will get Android 11, but later sometime. Around Feb is what I am expecting. So you have nothing to do with this beta. And if you wish to install this version, well, you can surely, and you will not lose any data, but it is advisable to take a backup and you will not get a stable update automatically. To go back to stable Oxygen OS, you will have to install it manually once and then you will get future stable OTAs. If you are on open beta, you get monthly open beta updates. And this is only the first one of many more to come. And if you are on stable, you get bi-monthly patches and updates. That is one update in two months for stable version. And almost monthly update for open beta line. And I hope it clears out most of your doubts and if it doesn't, I'll leave a link to the update schedule in the description area and you can have a look at the official statement. Okay, so now that part is clear, we can move on to the issues that are pending and what issues have been resolved with this update. Starting off with the good part and well this version is quite stable overall as we have seen buggy builds in past based on Android 10 and in my time with it, well I did not find anything major as such that would like stop me or create any major issues in using this device as my daily driver. But this is still a beta and it does have some issues which I will get to in a second. Anyways for what it's worth, you get most of the features from flagships like 8T on this OnePlus Nord, from canvas AOD to the latest camera UI. Most of it is there and that's really a good thing to have. Talking about the canvas AOD, well it works fine for me all the time and it is different experience altogether. But it is buggy for many users and I got a few complaints regarding that so it may or may not work for you at all. So keep that in mind and as of now I haven't found a fix. Also that horizon light feature is working fine and you can enable it in settings then go to customization and turn on this toggle. And from now on the screen will glow up just like this when a new notification arrives. One major issue that has been solved with this update is the google app offline one. So the Google app used to show this offline error on mobile data and in all this time it worked just fine and there are no issues as such. So glad they got this basic thing working after all this time. But there are still issues with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth even on this build. Let me show you. Well before this update the Wi-Fi used to disconnect right away. But here look at the speed before connecting the OnePlus Buds and here is the speed after connecting the Buds C. So it reduces to like half or even lower as soon as the Bluetooth earphones are connected. And this only happens on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. And as soon as I switch over to 5 GHz, well, it goes into God mode and everything works really well. So in case your router supports 5 GHz mode, well turn it on for now and you will not face this issue. And I hope it gets fixed in the next build, so let's see. Speaking about that, well there was this issue with quick pairing feature on the OnePlus Nord and to connect any earphones, you had to turn on the Bluetooth and tap on the device. But in this build, it works fine. Though it takes 5 to 10 seconds to pair at the end, it does connect to the earphones automatically without an effort. So good to see that thing getting resolved. Also the disconnection issue with Free Fire on mobile data seems to have been fixed for the most part. Though I do see that ping speed going crazy sometimes, but it is working fine as of now. And I still cannot play Among Us and it disconnects after like 10 to 15 seconds on Wi-Fi. But it works fine on mobile data as usual. And no, my Wi-Fi is perfectly alright and it works fine on the OnePlus 8T. Now talking about that battery drain. Well it has been quite good so far and I find it even better than what I had with Oxygen OS 10, both on light and heavy usage. And here are the stats. So day 1, I use my device only for calls and normal streaming and stuff. Nothing major or games throughout the day. And I could manage more than 7 hours. And also that ambient display was set to always on during all this time. So 7 hours isn't that bad. 
and I did realize that always on display is eating up like 10% of the battery overnight, which is quite a bit more. So I turned it off and had some pretty good results with heavy usage. And as you can see in the stats, this involved around 1 hour of streaming, 2 hours of gaming and calls and other usage. And I could manage around 7 hours easily. And I do realize that Free Fire isn't a graphics intensive game, but still it did quite good for me, though the results might vary for you. And I think the results are better for the most part as the standby drain is also quite less so far. So I hope it improves even more in future. And one thing I observed is the increased charging time after this update. So it takes a bit more time to charge completely now and that is one of the bugs I felt we have with this version. One more feature that I wanted fixed was that full screen display of apps. And some of the applications like Prime Video and some games run as if there is a notch above. But that shouldn't be the ideal case and it was the same with last version. So they do need to fix this issue ASAP. A couple of other tiny observations like this dark mode isn't fully dark and I see no point of grayish theme in saving the battery. I also observed this purple tint sort of that runs in the background as you scroll. And I'm pretty sure this is a theme they have chosen because same issue can be felt on the OnePlus 8T and it looks kind of weird and dark and there was no such issue with Oxygen OS 10. So I hope they take care of it. Coming to the camera part now and here on the UI front there are quite a few changes that you might have to get used to now. So most of the changes can be done without going to settings and it feels nifty. Plus the UI is same as that of the OnePlus 8 so you don't miss out on any of the new features. But what about the image quality? Well it seems pretty much similar so far and here have a look at these camera samples. So the back camera takes some good quality shots in daylight and the images have good details and color accuracy too is nice as usual. Though the edge detection on portrait mode seems kind of bad now and you can use a Gcam mod to get better results but we are not here for that right? And I won't talk much about the other two cameras because they are as is. Similar was the case for that front facing camera and it still overexposes images quite a bit in artificial lightning scenarios. So the images lack details and just look faded as I've been complaining since day one. So here it falls apart again and there is a solution for now that is to use a Gcam mod. At least it results in somewhat sharper images though it makes me look terrible but still better than looking like a doll. Similar is the case for videos and there is no 60fps support on 4K. Whereas the front facing camera has that weird choice but okay. So the video mode is slightly tweaked and the results are more or less similar to what we had with Oxygen OS 10. So no major difference here. And if you were wondering whether you should update to this version or not, well if you are aiming for full stability with applications and all the features, you should wait for the stable update. And it will come as soon as the above mentioned issues are fixed. And till then, if you still wish to try out the new features and this changed UI, well feel free to try it out as there are no major concerns with this one. And as usual, feel free to ping me on Telegram or Insta or Twitter. So that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you made it till the end of this video and press that like button while you are at it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.